Well, howdy there, Internet people. It's Bo again. So today we're going to talk about what President Biden can learn from former President Trump about foreign policy. And it's not a joke. Uh, I know people probably thought that was a typo in the title. So Trump's foreign policy was not good. It was bad. It was really bad. It was basically an unmitigated failure in pretty much every regard. However, he attempted to do something. And although it failed because he didn't have the skill set or the base of knowledge to make it work, it was a good idea. High-level talks with North Korea. Now, I don't think that Biden actually has the base of knowledge or skill set by himself to make it work either. However, Biden has a really good foreign policy team behind him, so he might be able to. For a very long time, the United States has insisted on a precondition, getting rid of that program, that program that the North Koreans have. It has to go away before anything can happen. That's bad. That's not a good that's not a good stance and we have held it for a very long time and it has produced absolutely no positive results. North Korea isn't going to do it. They have no reason to do it. If you look at countries that went that route with the United States, most of them got toppled shortly after they gave up their programs or the US just pulled out of the deal. They have no reason to believe the U.S. is acting in good faith because the United States is probably not acting in good faith. Now, before we go further, we should get rid of a little bit of fear that constantly gets put out. The United States is not going to invade North Korea. has no desire to. North Korea is not going to attack the United States. That drama, that's not real. That's all posturing. The U.S. won't invade North Korea because for a uh, little more than half a century, they have been preparing for it. They're ready for it. It's not a position the U.S. wants to be in. Aside from that, they have China as an ally. North Korea doesn't want to attack the United States because although they know we won't invade... We do have a lot of aircraft. And if they start it, well, China may decide that they need to exert just a little bit more control over North Korea. And they don't want that. It's a stalemate. And it has been a stalemate for a very long time. That's not a realistic flashpoint. Not really. So... With it being kind of in gridlock, there's no real likelihood of it moving towards conflict. Which means there's a lot of free area to move into, moving towards peace. The first step is the United States dropping the idea that getting rid of that program has to be on the table. It doesn't. We have plenty of time. Because however long we continue to insist on getting rid of the program as being some kind of precondition, that's just however long it's going to take until there's any real progress even started. They aren't going to agree to it. It's not going to happen. They have no reason to believe we're acting in good faith because we're probably not. So, what do we do? What's the best move? Especially now that the United States is retooling to face near peers, one of which is China. North Korea knows this. North Korea is aware that the United States isn't going to want to create a flashpoint where none exists with China. So they have an even freer hand. Talks, high-level talks. Now, you don't have to salute North Korean generals or offer them a ride in Air Force One or any of that stuff, but high-level talks with the North Korean government over nothing, 
over minor stuff, fishing rights. Like, it doesn't have to be anything related to the military. Just to show that dialogue can produce results, because so far, they haven't had a lot of signs that it can, because we've insisted on something that they're not going to do. Kim Yo-jong, who is Kim Jong-un's sister, is a very powerful woman in that country. She's the de facto number two, really. She just made a statement directed to the United States. It wasn't very complimentary, but it doesn't matter. It opened, opened the door to conversation. Now, it shouldn't be Biden, just like it won't be Kim Jong-un, because you know he's met with a president now. So it's going to have to be a head of state who talks to him. However, their number two, talking to our vice president very openly, would probably produce a lot of results. If getting rid of that program wasn't the, the main focus of it. There's a whole lot of other issues in the area. And it could start with that. And yeah, this isn't going to uh, result in getting rid of nukes anytime soon. It's going to be a long process. But at least it would start the process. Because right now, we're not even remotely moving in that direction. So that would be a move I'd watch for, is the start of high-level talks. Now, we don't know. Biden's team is currently reviewing Trump's policy, or lack thereof, when it comes to North Korea. And they're trying to come up with an official stance. There's already been some uh, little setbacks in that road. But they're hoping to come up with some kind of centralized policy. I would hope that it includes talks that don't have the, the precondition of getting rid of that program. Because if they want to have any real progress, that's what they're going to have to do. Anyway, it's just a thought. Y'all have a good day. A couple of y'all have commented saying that I seem down. I'm actually a little under the weather. I'm not like emotionally distraught or anything. I just don't feel well. <laughs> anyway, y'all have a good day.